In this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you how to use the Track Edit mod for Park Attacks by Michael Peem. This is a mod that's available through the Steam Workshop at this moment and was actually available for quite a while through the old Park Attack Nexus uh, modding website. This mod has actually not been updated in quite a while and as far as I'm aware is not in active development. Um, I know that the developer has mentioned a few times on Discord that he would love to get back to it and rewrite it someday. But disclaimer, that's in no way, shape, or form him confirming that he's going to do it. It's just him saying that he would like to get back to this someday. With that said, uh, this mod is very buggy and it is very finicky. Um, I've, I've been used to working with it for years prior to it getting buggy. So I've kind of learned my way on how to wrangle the bull. I guess it's the best way to put it. Um, but a lot of new users will find it frustrating um, because it requires a lot of patience, fine-tuning, and constant saving and reloading because more than likely until you get used to how it works, you're going to be breaking your track a lot. With that said, I'm going to be showing you two methods of how to modify your track, freehand and manipulating the pre-built track pieces using the track edit mod. One thing that you do want to keep in mind, and I want to preface this in advance, if you freehand draw your track, as you can see this coaster in the background, many of these elements are actually freehand drawn, such as this uh, overbank curve over the dive loop, this curve here, followed by this incline, this incline in the back, and just a majority of this. The system is unable to calculate it for its ratings appropriately because it sees it as missing sections of track. So what does this do? <laughs> if you pull out uh, the statistics, it gave my roller coaster triple digit intensity and nausea rate and ratings. Um, because of this, no guest wants to ride my ride, uh, which sucks because I was actually really happy with the way this coaster rode, except for the Cobra roll, which goes really slow. Um, essentially kind of rendering this ride useless, unless I just want to keep it there for show. Which, if that's what you want to do, hey, by all means, awesome. Uh, that gives you more freedom, you know, with a track edit tool. So enough of me rambling about that. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and start building a coaster and show you the difference between freehand and manipulating the pre-built track. I'm going to use the floorless coaster for this example. I'm going to go ahead and build a station. Nope, I do not want to go up, actually. Um gonna go ahead and go right and I am going to go straight into my lift hill nothing too fancy one thing that's gonna pop up a lot are these error boxes uh, these are from the in-game system I, I guess presumably freaking out that uh, this engine is essentially breaking the rules <laughs> so it's, it's gonna think that the game is bugging out just hide this error this game session and it's gonna go away All right, so we've got our lift hill. I'm going to do just top it off. I'm going to do just a basic drop. No, it's not what I wanted. Build. All right, so we got very basic start to a b &M. You'll see that with track edit enabled, there's going to be these white dots all along your track. These dots mean that you can manipulate that section of track. You'll also see here that when you're building pieces of track, you have this ghost piece, this preview piece, you can call it. This thing is going to be your worst enemy, and I'm going to show you why. If you're ever manipulating any of these nodes and this preview piece is up, it's going to completely ruin the part that you're working on because the camera is going to take you from wherever you are and force your cursor to go towards this piece right here, essentially stretching out the piece of track that you're working with. So I'm going to show you an example right now. So let's say we want to manipulate this piece. I'm going to click it, and as you can see, the game immediately magnetized it over to this section of the screen, completely butchering um, that piece of track. So, I mean, technically, <laughs> as you can see, it's still functional, uh, but not for what we wanted to do. So, uh, we're going to go ahead and 
build that drop again. Go back to our loop, and I'm going to show you the difference. So if you use these arrows next to the bulldozer to move the piece, um, such as like highlight this piece, or if you push next segment twice, it takes you to the end of the ride, and you go to manipulate a piece, it doesn't do anything. Uh, the cursor will occasionally give you the exit and entrance like it just did now. Just place them. Don't worry about it. Once you do it once, it doesn't happen again. Um, but yeah, you'll see that you have free reign to manipulate this piece. Now, as for the segment itself, I'm going to show you what a node is comprised of. Alright, so I'm going to just use a straight piece here. Alright, so this right here, this white piece, like I mentioned, this is the node. This is what's going to manipulate uh, that whole portion of track. If you select it, you're going to have three options. Technically four if this track piece is in the middle of another, which I'll demonstrate that in a second. This central node allows you to move the track piece around any way that you want. You can move it left and right, up and down, hold down the shift key. You can increase and decrease the height. And that's pretty much it for there. At the edge of this dot, of this little node, are typically two handles depending on where the track is. So if this is a, the end piece, you're going to have one and that's right behind it. This piece is what controls the heading and the pitch of the ride. So for example, if I move it left, you'll see that it moves the heading in that direction, right? It moves it there. If I hold down shift, you see that it, it changes that entry and exit of this node by changing that pitch. You can manipulate this in any way you want. There's no limits to the angle itself. Um, unless you, of course, want to kill anyone <laughs> or do uh, anything crazy. Um, something else that's super important about this piece. This also adjusts uh, the length of track and will help you tremendously in smoothing out pieces of track. So, for example, let's say if I lift this piece up right here. And we're like, oh no, this, you know, looks ugly. This is too sharp of an incline. You can actually use this piece to drag it out to either make it sharper or you can drag it out to make it less sharp. Now, this is a pretty bad example, I'll be honest, because uh, this is the exit piece itself. So what I'm going to go ahead and do is I'm going to demonstrate it on a piece that already exists. And the drop's actually a perfect example. So if I select this node, you'll see it actually gave me two handles. It goes off of the angle that the track is facing. So I'm going to move it in a front facing view. If I move this to the left, you'll see that it changes the heading of the track in that direction. If I do it to the top one, it changes it on the top side versus the bottom. So you can kind of see how they both work in tandem there. If you adjust this hook, you can adjust the steepness of the drop. Same with the bottom. Um, it affects more of the bottom section, but as you can see, you can make things way steeper than they already are. Of course, you can use the central node to change the height and move it around if you wish. The last piece of this, of nodes, is this ring. This ring is what controls the banking. So if you select this piece, you'll be able to change the banking. Um, there is no limitations to the track editor. So if you wanted to do, we'll say like a <laughs> hundred inline twists, um, you could. That looks interesting um and yeah the the coaster will actually go through it so let me speed it up so you can see kind of how that works i would hate to be someone who's writing this <laughs> and there you go um so yeah that's the the four major points of track manipulation banking Heading, pitch, and yaw are all controlled from this central node. 
And as you can see, that's how you modify pre-built pieces. Now comes the freeform building, and this is what's going to skew your excitement ratings. So for example, this right here, since we modified a piece of the track, it's not going to skew your ratings as bad as doing what I'm about to do next. So we've got this preview piece. As I mentioned before, you always, always, always want to get rid of that. If not, it's going to ruin whatever you're working on. I'm going to click back. Now this green node is one that you most likely saw earlier. This is what's going to allow you to create a new node. You're going to click and hold and it's going to create this new node at your mouse pointer. This is where you can click and drag to draw this piece of track. This process is kind of like it's a one of a it's a one at a time process. Like you can't expect to do a whole bunch of things at once. So what I'm going to do is just make this a curved incline. So when you're clicking and dragging, don't let go yet. If you hold down the shift key, you can go ahead and manipulate the height while you're at it at this point. So I'm going to go ahead and make it an incline. All right. As you can see, the system was not happy with how this piece of track connects with the other. So it made the node red to fix it. You're going to click it. And it will try to fix itself the first time. So this time it didn't. Usually that error is going to arrive due to having an, in, an incline that's like crazy steep or something that just doesn't connect well with the system. So as you can see, kind of like modifying these inclines here has made my uh, monstrosity look a little bit smoother on these parts. And we've got like the beginnings of an incline curve here. So if I select this node, I'm going to go ahead and bank this towards the right. So we got banking going there. Perfect. So we've got this banking and right now it's kind of aiming towards the ground. So if we don't want to have too sharp of an incline or um, if we actually want this to be smooth, I'm going to go ahead and select this node, grab the hook here, and I'm going to drop that down. And as you can see, it's starting to, to flatten out. So if I wanted to give this a curve this way, I can. So I'm going to select this node here and fix it. So now what we can do to make this smoother, I'm going to drag this piece to bring it closer, adjust the incline, and it looks much better. And then of course from here, um, once you kind of get the hang of it, start drawing your track. I'm going to flatten this out. I'm actually going to make this a uh, little airtime hill here. As you can see, that looks really weird. So you have to make sure that you adjust uh, your heading and aw uh, and uh, yaw accordingly. Um, and it actually just glitched out on me. So I'm actually clicking right now, but it's not letting me drop the piece. So you just push escape. Click on the station. Edit. It'll take you to that piece. And it looks like the piece actually disjointed here. So we're going to move the preview piece. It's kind of hard to see, but click the white node. Connect it again, and we should be in business. There we go. So what I'm going to do to fix this is I'm going to change the heading on both segments here. Gonna push this out a little bit more. And it's super important to look at this from all angles because um, it might look fine from one side, but it might be crazy crooked from another. So just kind of like a little heads up there. All right, and I'm gonna even this out, flatten that bank. And put the other time of the airtime hill here. I'll use this to flatten out this side of the hill. Wants to be even. There we go. Track got disconnected up here. Red node. Give it a click. All right, it's happy. So now. I am going to modify this. Let's see. 
There we go. And we have a freeform airtime helm. Um, of course, like I mentioned, you can shift this around, manipulate it to your will. If you pull these handles closer, you can actually make it tighter. As you can see, or push it out if you make to if you wish to make it wider. Pay attention to these red nodes. That means that there's an error somewhere on this track, and this is more likely going to derail right here. Um, so this can be fixed by either shifting, as you can see, the pitch, the heading, or the yaw. And that's pretty much my basic tutorial on the track edit mod. Um, if you ever want me to get a lot more in depth with it, uh, show you building a full coaster with it or anything of that nature, let me know in the comments. Um, you can find me on Discord. I'm Max Freak. Um, I'm, I'm constantly there through all the channels. Um, I try to be as active as I can. And I am also one of the administrators on the Facebook group Theme Park in Simulation Games. I'm Julian Andino. Uh, you'll see me posting about Parkitect all the time. I'm always showing off my parks and my coasters there. Um, and helping any of our user, or, um, our members uh, with questions they may have or issues. Um, and also, of course, talking about other theme park games as well. Uh, so that'll be it for this video. I hope that it served its purpose on either scaring you away from the mod, um, helping you get more comfortable with it, or answer any questions that you may have had. Um, and like I mentioned, if you want to know more, just let me know. Shoot me a question. I'm always happy to help.